Hi, I'm Cassandra. I'm going to be doing an abdominal assessment on Michael Kirby. We've already washed hands and verified date of birth. So I have my patient. He's already laying down. <laughs> uh, we'll go over a quick health history. Do you have any um, concerns regarding your stomach? No. Nope. No, nope. everything seems to be fine. Do you have any history of like peptic ulcer yeah. disease, GERD, like regurg regurgitation? I do heartburn? not. No. Okay, so if the patient would say yes, like they have chronic regurgitation, we would be concerned about potential Barrett's esophagus, which can lead to cancer. So it's one of the very common things that people tend to overlook that we want to assess for, which is just subjective. In your family, do you have a history of liver disease? No liver disease, no. liver no, disease? No. Okay, so I'm looking at my patient. I see his stomach is smooth, it's flat. It looks very symmetrical. I don't notice any bulging. I don't see any peristalsis or the, um, I don't see his aortic artery pulsating. So from here, everything looks good. Now I'll move on to my auscultation. Now listen to all nine areas. Listening for bowel sounds. Any hypo or hyperactive. So bowel sounds normal and present in all four quadrants. Then I'm also going to want to listen over the aorta for any bruise. And also over the renal arteries. And down to the femoral arteries. I don't hear any breweries, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so next I'm going to move on to percussion. So I'm going to percuss, listening for any areas of dullness. Excuse me. If I heard any dullness over the area where the intestines are, that would give me a clue that there's possibly a mass. Now also percuss to estimate the span of the liver. Okay. So we're looking at about six centimeters. Um, had I felt and heard any dullness lower, we would be it would indicate that there's a potentially enlarged liver or something enlarged that's pushing the liver down and causing it to be lower than it's supposed to be, which would mean I would send the patient out for a, an ultrasound to have a diagnosis done there to get a more accurate estimate of the size of the liver. So after we're done percussing the abdomen, we're going to start with a light palpation feeling for any masses, very superficially. Do you have any pain as I touch? No pain at all. So nope. any areas of tenderness you would want to investigate further. Um, this patient doesn't have any pain, so we can palpate a little bit deeper, feeling for any masses that may be present. Just let me know if you have any pain. And we can also palpate for the liver, pressing up underneath the client's rib cage. And feeling down under. For an obese client, sometimes you'll have to use more of a scooping method. We'll also want to palpate for the spleen. So when we percuss, if we hear, typically a spleen isn't palpable, but if it's enlarged, you can hear dullness upon percussion and also when you palpate underneath the patient's left rib cage you can feel the lower edge also with an enlarged spleen a patient will typically have pain upon palpation or at least tenderness and they can let you know you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to rupture the spleen 
Um, some specialized exams, if the client came in with pains of upper right quadrant pain, we could do a Murphy's sign test where we have the patient take a deep breath in and you press right up under the rib cage and if they say they feel pain, that is a possible sign for cholecystitis. We want to send them out for further evaluation. Testing for potential appendicitis, you can lift the patient's right knee and turn inwards. And if the patient reports pain, that's also another possible sign for appendicitis. Uh, this particular patient's healthy and well, so we'll go ahead and let him go on his way. And thank you very much.